Hey everybody, welcome back to NetTuts. I'm Jeffrey Way, and in this new episode of Convert a Warm, Cheerful Web Design to HTML and CSS, we're going to be working on the JavaScript today, and we're going to be building that tabbing functionality. So we got to be a little bit quick here. It's Christmas time. I have to go to a party. So we'll go over this as quick as possible, but I'll make sure you understand as much as you can. Okay, so chapter six, build the tabbing system with JavaScript. Let's get started. Okay, and now we're back into where we left off in the last lesson. We can come here and you can see we built the base structure for our tabbing area, but now we need to make it look good. And later we'll come back with our CSS, even if JavaScript is disabled, and make it look nicer for them as well. But mostly that's just giving a little bit of breathing room to each of these and uh, getting rid of some of the margins. Okay, so let's move into Espresso. And because we're working with JavaScript, and reference this scripts.js file. So I'll come to the bottom and place my reference right right below. So you can see here above, we're referencing jQuery 1.4, and then below that is where we import js slash scripts.js, like so. So now, if you want to make sure that it's working, you can do something simple like alert high, come back, refresh, and now we are referencing that JavaScript file. Okay, so the first thing is we want our code to be clean. So that means you don't want to create a bunch of global variables. So uh, one thing worth noting though is I'm going to assume you know an ounce of JavaScript. So if you really don't know anything, uh, you might want to get a JavaScript book, uh, maybe get Jeremy's 24 hour trainer, JavaScript 24 hour trainer. However, if you have a basic knowledge of it, I think this will work for you. Okay, so we'll begin by creating one global object, and this object will contain uh, all of the methods that we require. So within it, we'll have our init method, and this will be the function that gets everything rolling. So the way we get ready for that is at the bottom, we would do site init, and you could say something like, let's roll. Okay, so within this init method, what do we need to do first? Well, first, if you go back, you'll see here that we've moved this over. So why don't we go ahead and we could place this at the very top because we want that to take effect as soon as possible. That way, any style sheets uh, will recognize it as quickly as possible. So let's move that. Okay, so now let's go back to our script file. And we want to create the tabbing functionality. So in a normal website, this scripts or this site object would be responsible for a lot. However, in this case, we're really not doing much. We're building the tabbing functionality. So this refers to site, and we're saying this call the tabs method. All right, let's create that right now. Tabs is a function. Okay, so what do we want to do here? First, let's create a variable and we'll call it tabs and this needs to be equal to the tabs container. So if we come down here, let's go ahead and find it. So we have secondary and then right here, this section contains the comments, the categories, the archives, etc. And so that is section with a class of tabs. But there could be multiple tabs in our project, so why don't we instead go secondary tabs, all right? So tabs is equal to get secondary and then tabs. So what this means, get the element with a class of tabs, that is a direct child of the element with an ID of secondary. Okay, so now we've targeted it. Now we need to target each of those unordered lists. So can you see that we have uh, let's come down tabs, but within tabs we then have the UL for the comments, so let's close that one out. And then you have one for the categories, all right, close that out. And then finally you have one for the archives. Let's go back here, and you can see we have comments, categories, archives, and then we have comments, categories, and archives. And each of those is contained within a UL. So we're going to be working with those, so let's go ahead and quote unquote cache those locations. That way we don't have to continue traversing the DOM every time we want to access them. So we'll say UL equals, and we could do tabs, but remember, you've already stored a reference to that, so we don't need to query the DOM again for it. We can just say tabs, and we're going to find the UL. So get that tabs and then find any un unordered lists that are direct children of the tabs. Okay, and then finally, I need the tab heading. So if we go back to index.html, you can see at the top tab heading, this is basically our navigation area. All right, so let's come back into scripts and we need to store a location to that as well. And we'll say tab headings equals tabs.prev tab headings. 
Okay, what is pre? It's just previous. So you only do this if you're certain that your structure isn't going to change. So in this case, we know where this is and we know the tab headings comes right before it. So I'm just saying get this one and get the element that the sibling that comes right before it. Okay, and jQuery makes that really easy. So now we have a reference to everything that we require here. So the next step is hide all the H4s. Hide all H4s. So if you come back, remember we have these headings that we planted in here if JavaScript is disabled, right? Archives, categories, but we don't need those. We're using these headings up here. So that's the first step is make sure uh, we could do this within the JavaScript or we could do it within our CSS file. So if you wanted to do it in the JavaScript, you would do something like tabs.findh4.remove. However, we could also do this in the CSS file by setting display to none. And how can we accommodate for when JavaScript is disabled? Well, we've applied a class here, and then if JS is enabled, we go ahead and change that class to JS. So what we can do now is go into our CSS file, and we can find the H4s. So let's see if we can look within. Here you go, tabs. And I can place it. Let's find a good place to place it. Maybe right here. We'll say tabs h4 display none however that's going to apply to everything we only want it to apply if js is enabled so we'll say js all right and now if i refresh those have disappeared and we didn't have to do that within our javascript file there's no need to affect styling and presentation if you can get away with it using just css okay so the next step is hide all of the content but the first hide all content but first so what does this mean? Hide everything, because right now, by default, contents will display. But other than that, I don't want to show categories and archives. I only want to show those when I click on each of these items. OK, well, how can we do that? Well, we can say ULs, get all of those unordered lists, and then we'll say, but not the first, hide. Now again, if you want, you could do this with CSS. Now notice here, nothing's happening. How come is that? Well, remember to use Firebug when you're debugging because you'll invariably leave off semicolons and things like that. So if we go into Firefox, refresh, you'll see ULs is not defined. Okay, that's an easy one. We called it UL up here, but we really wanted to call it ULs because we're referring to one more than one. So now if I come back and refresh the page, we've gotten rid of those. So if you wanted, you could also do this with CSS. However, that CSS would rely on some forward uh, techniques. So I'll show you a way to do that with CSS. So for now, I'll just cut that out. And now let's go into style.css. And we'll say JS tabs and then get the UL. Because remember, we're just mimicking what we have here. So tabs, get the UL. And then we need to hide all of them but the first one. So if you want, like this, you could say display none. And then you could do it again and say, but JS tabs UL first child display block. And now if we come back into Chrome, let's refresh. And that's still getting that same effect, even though within our JavaScript file, we've deleted any reference to that. And that's because we're doing it with plain old CSS. So always figure out what's most important to you. You can use for IE, you can use things like select divisor to allow for that. Now we could also group these into one. So how could you do that? You could say JS tabs, then get all the ULs, but not first child and say display none. And now let's get rid of that and see if that worked. And if I refresh now, we've condensed those two properties into one. And always make a comment initially, I had all the ULs except for the first one. Okay, so now that's another thing we've taken out of our JavaScript that's not necessary. Okay, so the next step is listen for when you click on one of these headings. When you click on one of these, we wanna do something, of course. So listen for heading clicks. Okay, well, we have that stored in tab headings. So we'll say tab headings dot delegate. And we're going to use the delegate method of the jQuery object. And this allows us to assign an event listener to a parent rather than applying an event listener to, say, 30 anchor tags, or in this case, four. We're just going to apply one to the parent, and that'll listen for what was clicked on. It'll be a little more performance friendly. So grab all the list items and listen for when one of those is clicked on. And when it is, and we'll pass the event object, We'll first say var li equals this. So we might even want to change that to li because that's going to be the list item that was clicked on. So if I click on this, we're going to create a variable called li and that's going to be equal to that one. 
Okay, next I'm going to create another variable called hash. We'll come back to that in a minute. Don't worry about that. So the first thing I want to do now is change the selected class to the selected one. Okay, that doesn't make much sense. What we want to do here is when you click on this, notice here that this class of selected has the blue background. Well, when we click on one of these, we want to then apply that class to those. So let's take a look here, and if we come down to our tab headings, right here, class of selected. So that's what we want to do right there. Okay, well, we can do that pretty easily. Let's come back into Chrome, back into scripts.js. We'll say li's, I'm sorry, li dot siblings, remove class, selected. So grab that li, grab all of its siblings, so all of the other list items, and make sure they don't have any class of selected. And then we're done there, so I'm going to hit end. And what this does is first, we have a reference to the list item that was clicked. But then we change that, and now it, we're referring to all of the siblings of that list item, and we do something. But now we're done working on the siblings, so done, end. And now, once again, we're referring back to the li that was clicked. And here we'll add a class, add class of selected. Okay, so it's not the prettiest method, but that'll work just fine. So if I click on it, refreshed, and now we've allowed for the changing. Okay, cool. So what's the next step? We need to get the hash of the anchor tag that was clicked. So for instance, when you click on it, I want to make sure that we grab comments, categories, etc. And also, we're listening for when the li is clicked. If you want, you can just as easily do the a. Okay, just depends. So the next step is grab the hash of the anchor. And how can we grab that? We can grab that by doing hash equals li.children a dot attribute href. So if you want, you can also place this on its own line if it's more readable for you. Here, I think it's fine. So why did we declare hash at the top if we're only actually initializing it here? And it's because behind the scenes, the elements will be hoisted to the top of the function anyways. So it's always a good practice. To declare all your variables within a function uh, at the very top. Okay, so here we declare it, and then here we initialize it, and we make it to the li.children. So grab the li that was clicked on, get its children, a, and then we grab the href. So at this point, hash would be equal to categories or archives or comments. And now all we have to do is show the corresponding section. So here, show corresponding section. And we can say uls.hide, hide all of them, okay? And now we're gonna filter down to the hash and then show that one. Okay, so this one might confuse you. Filter hash. Well, remember, hash is going to be equal to comments. So that's almost an ID. That's why we assigned it that way. Remember, we make the href link to an ID. So this corresponds to comments right here. The next one, href categories, respond, refers to what you see right here. So now, when we have that trigger, we can say get all of those ULs and then hide all of them. But then break that UL down and only show the one that says. Now let's say you click on this. Well, we're saying get all the ULs and hide them, but then get the one pound categories and show that one. So let's try that. Refresh categories. Aha, check it out. And now that's working. Isn't that easy? It's very, very simple JavaScript. We can improve it a bit, but that'll work just fine. So if you want to make it look a little nicer, you could do a fade in maybe. Fade in over the course of 500 milliseconds. Try that. Refresh, fade, and now that content is going to fade in like you can see right there. So there's our tabbing system. But notice how when I clicked on that anchor tag, also, you get that. So we don't want that. So you could also say something right here, e.preventDefault. Refresh. And now when I click on it, nothing's going to happen. Because if you clicked on the anchor tag, we're saying prevent the default action of that anchor tag. And that default action is to link to another page, or in this case, to that element. So here we're saying, don't do that. We're going to do something else instead. So click on it, and now we've implemented our cool tabbing system with just JavaScript. All right, so that'll do it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will, I don't know, let's find out. Compensate for IE. And then probably I'll add another lesson where we will clean up, because we have to do a lot of things like adding uh, the specific typography. We need to clean up some edgy areas here. The tabbing, we should add some rounded corners where you can see that falls off right there. But we're getting really close. And then we got to work on the forms, of course, as well. So 
Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to all of you, and then will there be another episode 22nd? Yeah, we'll probably get one more episode in before the holidays, so I'll see you guys later. I'm Jeffrey Way. Bye-bye.